Hello, myself Dr. Bijani Kalyani, working as associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this video, I will discuss uh, the problems that are related to basic computer organization and design. The first problem statement is a computer uses memory unit with 250 2561 kilowatts of 32 bits each. So the memory addressing space can be 2561 kilowatts and 32 bits of each. A binary instruction code is stored in one word of the memory. The instruction code is stored in one word of the memory. The instruction has four parts. The instruction format can contain the four parts. The first part is an indirect bit. Second part is an operational code. Third part is a register code. Part to specify one of 64 registers and an address part. So, instruction format can consist of four parts. One is indirect bit, second one is the op code, third one is register code to specify the 64 register operations and an address part. Now, the problem statement can be how many bits are there in the op code or operational code, the register code part and the address part. So, instruction can be specified by using the four parts. One is the indirect bit, second one is the op code part, third one is register code part, next one is the address. So, how many bits that each part can be the op code, register code and the address part. The second one, draw the instruction word format and indicate the number of bits in each part. Next, how many bits are there in the data and address inputs of the memory. So, here 256 kilowatts are there. So, the 256 kilowatts can be represented in 2 power 8 into 2 power 10. 2 power 10 is represent the k value. 2 power 8 is the 6, uh, 256. So, here 2 power 18 is the value. So, here 18 address lines can be used to address the 256 kilowatts of the uh, address space of the memory. And there are 64, uh, 64 resistors are there. So, 2 power 6 can indicate the 64. So, each register code can be the 6 bits. The address is of 18 bits. So, here uh, 2 power 10 is the k value and 2 power 8 is the 256. So, 2 power 18, 18 address lines are used to reference the address space of the memory. So, the address space can be the 18 bits and 64 registers are there, 2 power 6. So, the 6 bits can be used to represent the register code and the indirect direct bit can be taken as 1 bit. So, total the uh, 25 bits that can be 18 plus 6 plus 1 bit. So, these can be the 25 bits and the computer is of 32 bits each. So, the 32 minus this 25, the 7 bits are used for the op code. So, here address space is of 18 bits, register code of 6 bits, direct indirect bit is 1 bit and the op code can be the 7 bits. Now, the instruction format can be used to represent four parts. One is indirect or direct bit which is of 1 bit. Next, op code is of 7 bits. Registers are of 6 bits and address space is of 18 bits. So, the, totally it should be the 32 bits. 
So the data part can be the 32 bits, the address part can be the 18 bits. So this is the solution for the problem. What is the difference between direct and indirect address instruction? How many references to memory are used needed for such type of instruction to bring an operand into a processor register? So there are two types of addressing modes. A direct address instruction need two references to the memory. So to read the instruction, to read the operand. And indirect address instructions need three references to the memory. Read instruction, read effective address, read the operand. Now with an example, we can discuss the instruction format the I bit can be represent whether it is a direct address or indirect address. If the opcode next the address, this is the instruction format. If I value is equal to 1, it is an indirect address mode. If I value is equal to 0, it is a direct address mode. So here, uh, in case of direct addressing mode, what is the address that is specified in the instruction format? Instruction itself, for example, 100 mm -hmm. and it is I value is 0 which indicates it is a direct address. Mm -hmm. Then in the memory, for example, the operation is the add operation. In the memory, at the 100 location, the address specified. At that point location, the operand can be available and this can be used in the computation of addition with the accumulator register. So, only two references can be needed. One is to read the instruction and to read the opcode and the second one is to read the address of the operand. So, in case of direct addressing, two references can be required. In case of indirect addressing, I value can be the 1 and add and if it all 100 is specified at the memory location of 100, one address is specified. This is the effective address of the operand. And if the memory is referenced at the 300 location, there itself the actual operand can be available. This operand can be used in computation with the accumulator register. So hence here three references of memory can be required. So that is the difference between direct addressing and indirect addressing. Next. The following control inputs are active in the bus system. For each case, specify the register transfer that will be executed during the next clock transition. So, three selection inputs are considered S0, S1 and S2. So, if both contain all three and in the second case 110, in the third case 100, in the fourth case all the three. 3 are zeros. So, these are the selection inputs. So, what happened here in the register IR read operation from the memory can be performed. The PC value can be updated and in the DR register write operation can be performed. Accumulator can perform the add operation. So, the register transfer language representation can be used to specify these operations. So, memory read to the bus and load to the IR register. So, from the AR address register that is pointed by the memory location, the instruction can be loaded into the IR register. So, this is the first case. And in the second case, TR to bus and load to the PC. So, the TR value can be temporary register value can be moved to the PC. So that PC value can be updated. Next, AC to bus, write to memory and load to DR. So here 
AC to data resistor, the accumulator value can be moved to the data resistor and the accumulator value can be moved to the location that is pointed by AR resistor in the memory which in turn performs the write operation on the memory. Next addition operation can be performed. So DR resistor value, AC resistor value can be added and the result is stored in the accumulator. So these are the four operations performed during the clock cycles that are described in the problem table. Next, the following resistor transfers are to be executed in the common bus system. For each transfer specify the binary value that must be applied to bus selection input S0, S1, S2. Okay. So here the selection inputs are these. For this, what are the binary values applied to the bus selection inputs and the resistors whose LD control input must be active so that load operation can be performed. A memory read or write operation if needed. Next, the operation in adder and logic circuit if any. So here the PC value can be moved to the AR resistor and the memory uh, location address value can be loaded to the IR resistor and the TR resistor value can be moved to the uh, pointed by memory to the uh, that is referenced by address resistor and here AC value is moved to DR resistor, DR resistor value moved to the AC simultaneously. So, to represent this, what are the selection input lines in the common bus system? To perform the first operation, the selection can be the 0, 1, 0. So, that the loading, the PC value can be loaded to the AR. So, here is the AR register, the LD loading of value of the PC can be performed. During second one, the memory address reference that has to be instruction can be moved to the instruction register so that the selection input S2 can be 1, S1 can be 1 and S0 can also be 1 so that IR can be read, memory read operation can be performed and the temporary value can be moved to the uh, here memory so that the write operation can be performed with the selection input S2 is 1, S1 is 1 and S0 is 0. Next, simultaneous data transfer can be taken place between AC and DR with the selection inputs S2 is 1, S1 0 and S0 0. Next problem. Explain why each of the following micro operations cannot be executed during a single clock pulse. Okay, in the common bus system, specify a sequence of micro operations that will perform the following operations. That is PC value pointed and can be loaded to IR, accumulator added with the TR value can be moved to the accumulator and AC value can be added to DR and the sum is stored in the DR resistor. So during that PC cannot provide address to memory, address must be transferred to AR first. So during one clock pulse, the PC memory pointed location cannot be transferred to IR. So it has to require two cycles the PC value first moved to the AR resistor and that location pointed instruction can be loaded to the instruction resistor. The second operation is add operation must be done with DR. So transfer of DR to TR to DR can be done first. So which has to require two clock signals. So that the AC value can be added with DR and the result can be stored in the AC. Next DR plus AC result of addition is transferred to AC. To save the value of AC in its content must be stored temporarily in DR. 
So here also the data transfer can be simultaneously occurred between AC and DR. Later on addition operation can be performed and that value can be moved to the AC. So it can also require more than one clock signal. Consider the instruction formats of the basic computer for each of the following 16 bit instructions. Give to the equivalent 4 digit hexadecimal code. Explain in your own words what is the instruction that is going to be performed. So the sequence of 16 bit instruction with 4 hexadecimal code can be given and what is the register transfer language operation that can be performed. So here this value can be equal to 24 and this is the add. So adding the content of 24 of memory to the accumulator that operation is performed during the first sequence of hexadecimal code 16 bit hexadecimal code and next this code is representing 124 and 1011 is STS store. So here memory location of 124 can be uh, can be pointed and can be referred with the accumulator the storing of that 124 location can be stored in the accumulator value. Next increment the accumulator by 1 with the resistor transfer 0 1 1. So depending upon the opcode value Mm, the instruction format, uh, the instruction type, whether it is register reference, memory reference, input output instruction can be identified. And this is the address on which this operation can be applied. What are the two instructions needed in the basic computer in order to set the E flip flop to 1? So if it all uh, any Mm, extra bit that is generated during uh, the arithmetic operation E flip flop can be activated to 1. So two instructions that can be operate on E flip flop are CLE, CME. CLE is clear 0, a 0 value is moved to the E flip flop. CME is complement E, the E value that is stored can be get the once complement value. Next, the content of AC in the basic computer is hexadecimal A937. This is the AC content. And the initial value of E is 1. Determine the content of AC, E, PC, AR and IR in the hexadecimal after execution of the CLA instruction. Okay. Repeat 11 more times starting from each one of the register referenced instructions. The initial value of PC is hexadecimal value that is 0 to 1. So what happened whenever the CLA instruction is executed uh, with the registers AC, E, PC and AR. So the register values E, AC, PC, AR and IR. Initially, it is the AC is having the value A937 and E is having a value 1 and the PC value is 021. And whenever you applied the CLA, so here the accumulator, clear accumulator, CLA means clear accumulator, the AC value, 0 values can be stored in the accumulator. And if it all uh, the register transfer language instructions that if you are applied, how the um, register values of AC, PC, AR, IR can be varied. And next CLE means clear E so that E value can be cleared 0. CMA complement the accumulator so that the accumulator value can be up. Uh, updated with the complement. Next CME complement the E value so that G, uh, the complement once complement E value can be saved. CAR means circular uh, right shift can be applied. 
so that the values can be updated and circular left shift can be applied increment the value by 1 here 3 7 so you can get 3 3 8 and skip if the next uh, depending upon the z value n value positive the sign bit can be checked here and zero value can be checked here and halting the computer these are the various register transfer instructions on that how the initial values can have to be changed between the resistors AC, PC, AR and IR and the E flip lock. Next an instruction at address 0 to 1 in the basic computer has I is equal to 0 an opcode of AND instruction and an address part equivalent to 0 8, 3. So, the instruction format, three fields are specified. The I value can be 0, so which indicates is a direct addressing mode on the address part equivalent to 0, 8, 3. Mm, and on a basic computer instruction has an address part equivalent to 0, 8, 3 in the hexadecimal form. The memory word at address 0, 8, 3 contains the operand value is B8F2. The content of AC is A937. So, have to perform the AND instruction. So, go over the instruction cycle and determine the content of the following resistors at the end of execute phase. So, after executing the AND instruction, what is the values of PC, AR, DR, AC and IR? So, repeat the problem six more times starting with an operational code of another memory reference instruction. So, it is a direct addressing i is equal to zero. The memory reference instruction, what is the op code? So, initially the PC is having zero to one, AR, DR and AC is initialized with A937, IR is zero value. And whenever you performed the AND operation, the resistor values can be changed. And the AND operation, AD operation can be performed with the accumulator value. Okay. So, here the accumulator value can be added so that the result is again stored in the accumulator itself after performing the AD operation. Next, LDA load the accumulator with the data register value to the accumulator and store the accumulator the value of the accumulator and branch unconditionally and also during branching the PC value must be updated. And here increment uh, on the zero value, zero status flag can be checked and if it all zero it can be skipped. So these are various memory referenced instruction with the initial value of AC A937. If it all I value zero all should be pointing to the memory address. Next show the contents in hexadecimal of resistors PC, AR, DR, IR and SC of the basic computer when an ISZ indirect instruction increment skip if zero instruction indirect instruction is fetched from memory and executed. The initial content of PC is 7FF. The content of memory at this address 7FF is EA9F. So, the content of memory at address EA9F is OC35. The content of memory at address of 3C35 is triple F. Why? Because it is an indirect addressing mode. So, the effective address of the uh, operand can be specified. One more memory reference can be required to get the actual operand. So, give the answer in a table with five columns, one for each resistor and a row for each timing signal. Show the content of resistors after the positive transition of each clock pulse. 
So it is an example of indirect addressing mode after execution of the increment skip if zero. So initially PC is having 7FF. During uh, first clock take, the 7FF can be moved to the address register. Next uh, clock pulse, uh, the value, initial value of the 7FF address EA9F. So that address can be loaded. Okay. Next uh, clock pulse, the EA9F value can be in the AR register. Uh, that can be pointed and during that what is the effective address can has to be retrieved and the operand at the uh, 4ff value can be used here it is i value 1 so it is an indirect address so here the clock signals can has to be two more clock signals can be required to get the actual operand and then apply the isz instruction Next problem, the content of PC in the basic computer is 3AF and the content of AC is AEC3. The content of memory at that uh, address 3AF is 932E. The content of memory at address 32E is 09AC. It is also the indirect address. The content of memory at address 9AC is 8B9F. What is the instruction that will be fetched and executed next? Show the binary operation that will be performed in the AC when the instruction is executed. And the content of resistors PC, AR, DR, AC and IR in the hexadecimal. The values of E, I and the sequence counter SC can be shown in a table. So, if at all the effective addresses can has to be specified here, I value can be modified. So, here at the memory location 3AF 932E is the location. 32E the 09AC, 9AC 8B9F. So, here the value can has to be added with the I value, it is an indirect address. So, that the effective address can be used here and the add operation can be performed on the so that the I value can has the one value, it is an indirect addressing mode. And how the addition operation can be performed on the AC and DR values with the content. And with this the E value whenever it is 1. What is the PC value, AR value, DR value and AC value with I value 1 and E value 1 and sequence counter 0. Next, make the following changes to the basic computer. Add a resistor to the bus system CDR counter resistor to be selected with S2, S1, S0 all are zeros. So, the opcode value can be used to determine the type of instruction. Okay. So, if it all triple zero to one one zero, it is the memory referenced instruction. If it all triple one, you have to check for I whether it is zero or one. So, depending upon that, it is a register referenced or the input output instruction. Next, replace the ISJ instruction with an instruction that loads a number into the count register CTR. So, how to load LDC address CTR so that the memory address can be moved to the count register. Add a register reference instruction ICSJ, increment CTR and skip next instruction if zero. Okay. So, increment the CTR register and skip if next instruction is 0. Discuss the advantage of this change. So, convert the ISZ instruction from a memory referenced instruction to register referenced instruction. Okay. The new instruction can be the ICSZ that is increment the counter register 
and if at all next instruction is zero skip the next instruction if at all zero after incrementing the ctr value that can be executed at the t3 instead of at the time of t6 a saving of three clock cycles so after addition the adding can has to take two clock cycles the add operation can take two clock cycles to fetch the operands in order to fetch the operands and one oper one cycle to perform the actual addition operation but if you used icsz the counter value can be incremented and it, there the check for zero can be done if it all zero the skipping of next instruction so that the three clock cycles can be saved here with the help of icsz instruction next a computer uses a memory of 65536 words with 8 bits in each word it has the following resistors pc ar tr each of 16 bits and ac dr ir 8 bits each so here the word size of the memory can be 8 so ac dr ir is of 8 bits a memory reference instruction consisting of three words an 8 bit operational code one word and a 16 bit address in the next two words all operands are 8 bits there is no indirect bit okay so draw a black diagram of computer showing the memory and resistors draw diagram showing the placement in memory of a typical three word instruction and the corresponding 8 bit operand list sequence of micro operations for fetching a memory reference instruction and then placing the operand in dr start the ti timing signal at the t not so here is the uh, the memory architecture so here 64k by it is the word size is of 8 bits so ac dr ir can hold the 8 bits size in order to fetch a word from the memory and here 16 bits uh, is the addressing lines that are pointed to the memory so pc ar tr can is of 16 bits each in order to point to the address space of the memory so this is the register block diagram and memory here during the memory the op code can be stored and all can be the operand can be the 8 bits but here off address can be used here the pc ar tr can be of 16 bits but memory word size is of 8 bits so off address can be used to refer the memory address space and during the first clock signal the pc value can be incremented and the during the pc what is the instruction is there that can be loaded in the ir next the decode operation can be implemented so that 0 to 7 bits can have ar uh, can be loaded and pointed with the pc value next AR eight to seven can be used to represent the what instruction or what operation can be performed, and the operand can be fetched with the help of data register DR. Next problem: A digital computer has a memory unit with a capacity of sixteen thousand three eighty four words. and 40 bits per word the word size can be the 40 bits the instruction code format consists of 6 bits for the operation part and 14 bits for the address part no indirect mode bit only all are direct mode addresses two instructions are packed in one memory word and a 40 bit instruction register ir is available in the control unit formulate a procedure for fetching and executing instructions for this computer so 
the address space can be the 16384 words and number of bits per word is the 40 so that the address space and database can be specified so here this is the 40 bits the instruction register capacity can store the 40 bits and the opcode one is of 6 bits and address is of 14 bits 6 bits for opcode two and the 14 bits for address two so here two instructions are packed in the memory word and a 40 bit instruction register is available in the control unit so the ir value capacity can be 40 bits and two instructions are packed in this memory so each instruction can require the opcode and address so two instructions can be divided this 40 bits into 20 bits and here 14 uh, uh, address lines can has to be used so that uh, 14 bits can be used for the address part so each uh, instruction can be used for the address part of 14 bits the remaining in the 20 bits 14 bits is the 6 bits those 6 bits can be used for the opcode part and here two decoders are required to decode the two instructions decoder 1 decoder 2 so in the instruction cycle fetching the instruction after decoding later on uh, get the operand and execute it so here read 40 bit double instruction from memory to ir and then increment the pc so two instructions can has to be packed in this control unit two instructions can be stored in the ir decode opcode one execute instruction one using the address one so this instruction one can be executed first decode the next opcode execute instruction two go back to step one read the next two instructions so simultaneously two instructions can get executed with this architecture an output program resides in memory starting from address 2300 it is executed after the computer recognizes an interrupt when fgo become a 1 so when output ien is equal to 1 then the interrupt can be uh, occurred that can be recognized during the output fgo buffer so here what instruction must be placed at address 1 and what must be the last two instructions of the output program so here bun2300 branch unconditionally so that uh, the interrupt can be on so that the branch indirect with address 0 can be executed why because here it is executed after computer recognizes the interrupt so i wo I O N interrupt can has to be on. Next, what must be the last two instructions? That means first the interrupt can has to be one, and here F G O is one, so that branching out to the zero the location can be done with the B U N to handle the interrupt. derive the control gates for the right input of the memory in the basic computer so here uh, in order to write to the memory uh, the right cycle can has to use the data fetching at each clock signal and to perform and reference the memory the input can has to be taken that input can be moved to the address pointed by the ar register in the memory so these are the problems related to the basic computer organization and the reference textbook that can be followed is the computer system architecture by morris mano so in that textbook uh, the problems that are mentioned uh, i have discussed the solutions regarding the basic computer organization problems Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.